I will be born in four years' time to a country that will be isolated for another 20 years, where interpersonal relations got so wrong that till today we have to deal with its consequences, corruption, xenophobia and other similar problems. I am eight years old. We live in Djechin, northern Bohemia. Our region is changing a lot, unfortunately for the worse. A year ago I started a business together with my mum. I told myself, this is what I want to do for a living. My business absolutely absorbed me. My company is growing rapidly. We became the market leader. Thanks to travelling all over the world, I started to realise that there are maybe more important things in one's life than making money. For a year now I hold a public office in Usti nad Labem. My life priorities switched. I wish my town and my country to become a place with great and sustainable conditions for living. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome businessman, regional politician and philanthropist Martin Hausenblas. Hello everybody. Um, first of all, I'm very, very thankful to be here today. Um, I, if, you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind, I will sit down because I'm very nervous to speak in English in, such a, in front of such an audience. So I would like to briefly speak about my, my life and what happened to me. Um, I was born in Djechin, and but I, I live all my adult life in Ustin nad Labem. And this is a beautiful city in the northern part of the Czech Republic. And um, I'm a patriot. Um, I found it out actually in Australia because I had to go home after six months. I just said, oh my God, what's wrong? It's such a beautiful place, but I found that I have my roots here. So I was gay since my first memory, so um, everything was fine till I was 12 and I figured out that um, I'm not normal. You know, people said it's not normal and I started to play. So I dated girls and I nearly, nearly uh, get, got married and when I was 19 I came out and it was quite difficult because um, my mother didn't know what does it mean gay and she was uh, quite, I would be rude, pissed off because um, she had some ideas who I should be and um, she told me terrible things so uh, I went away from my house and from my family to Stina Lavem and it took some time to, to recover. Um, actually my, my father thought that I will start to wear uh, women clothes and, and um, that I will start to, to speak uh, like one, one uh, eight tones uh, higher and um, it was a hard time. So then I just realized I was speaking with one man and, and he could give me a lesson. He said, if you played your best to be the best person in the world, there will be 5% of people who love you, 5% of people who hate you and 90% who don't care for you. And if you are who you are, there will be 5% of people who love you, 5% who hate you and 90% who simply doesn't care. And then I found that it's much easier to be um, authentic because life is the same. People around will just change. So you will lose some people and some other people will uh, fill the empty space. So uh, since that time I just was open gay and um, I started to do business because um, I was scared to be fired because of my sexual orientation. So I just said, okay, I will be the one who decides who is in and who is out. So it was not very noble reason why to do business, but um, good enough at that time for me. And uh, I started to work for Herbalife. Maybe you know that lose weight products. I was doing that for five years and um, it, was, it was tough time because uh, a lot of efforts and low low results um, it's like I, I remember one saying um, only when you crush olives you get a good juice of them so it was that particular time in my life I was uh, making a huge efforts 
to be successful and but I was living a fancy life also so I spent all my money and I made it bankrupt who has made bankrupt already yeah okay. so uh, is anybody here who was who was already on a, on a bottom on a really bottom in life so uh, it was the experience I was lying in a bed four days and very sorrow of myself and you know and I said oh life is so so horrible to me and um, then I just realized that there is another feeling which is uh, um, um, which is disgust disgust is better than than sorrow because if you d disgust then you have energy to change it if you have feel sorrow it's passive feeling so I just got really pissed off myself and, and, and I was speaking seriously in front of the mirror with myself and I just decided to, to get out of that situation. <coughs> and um, later on I spoke with another man and he said, when you get on the bottom, you just have to look around carefully, not to have to come back again and never settle down there. Some people does it, but, but there is no reason to do so. And if you are on the bottom, suddenly you have a firm surface underneath your, f your feet, so, so you, can, you can bounce back. So this is quite a good, good situation. Today I, I, I think it's, it was one of the best experiences I had. So later on I, I started to do another business in the promotional, text, uh, in the promotional items industry. I had a good two businessmen, uh, two business partners. Uh, one with one I'm, I'm cooperating till today. He's my best friend, and the second, he was the only handsome man. It's not a good good reason to do business actually. So later on, we we we, we just split apart, and and we we continued in in Asterix uh, with my partner. And later on, when we were joining EU, we suddenly knew that that there is um, a serious situation in our present business so we started to do another company called Adler and we are wholesaling textiles now we are um, I think in number five in the whole European Union in promotional textiles and um, funny stuff also because you know I, I had to go to China in 1990 um, I was the only blonde hair guy in China and the only things I could read was Shanghai Airport and and that was it and I had to survive there for one month and uh, another great experience. But um, we c I came back and we had a supplier of textiles and experience from that. Uh, you know, somebody said uh, people doesn't choose uh, site or pathways for reason, you know, because sometimes it's easier to, to take a main road. And it was the case. Uh, the reason why nobody was doing that because of such as difficult business but we did it somehow and the company started to explode and it started to be too big and it's quite difficult moment because suddenly you think that you are not good enough especially I felt like that and I never wanted to rely on anybody I wanted to have everything under control and suddenly company pushed me to the situation that I had to believe somebody to rely on other people and it was it was the lesson for for my fear actually lose control and I couldn't manage it um, I nearly killed myself in a car accident and that was the sign for me so I escaped to Australia for a couple of months and suddenly I found out that nobody is knowing me nobody is caring of Adler nobody cares of anything so I had, had a new beginning and it was just I was 35 at that moment and I found out um, maybe a second part of, of my life because at the beginning people mostly solve the question am I good enough so they are trying to, to prove themselves you know to, to get a new Ferrari and new house and new mortgage and new boyfriend whatever but suddenly you find out that that you know your ego is asking all the time more and more and more and and it's insatiable in unsatiable yes so it never it never ends and at that time I, I just said okay I'm probably good enough so what more and I'm 35 or oh 65 it's too far what I will do I can't travel for such a long time and I've started to look for reason and maybe this is important for for people who just don't know what to do now. 
because the major motivator in life is if you find out who you are, why are you here, what's your reason of life and purpose, and if you serve in that way. Because the motivation change. You don't do things for profit, you do things because you feel it's right. And it's great motivation, actually internal motivation. So the profit for you is it's not money anymore, but profit is a feeling of fulfillment. Everything is fine, um, my life has a reason, and everything is on its right place. And it's a great feeling, actually. So um, I started to look for my motivation, and I found out in Sahara, I, I was walking over Sahara, actually. It was a mission quest, you know, and uh, I, I walked many hundreds of kilometers in, in desert. And uh, uh, it's a place where you are lonely, and uh, it's, it's a very calm place, so you can't escape yourself. And you are just, um, you know, y you see who you are, and you, can't, you can run for a day, and you are still in the desert, so, so it won't help you. And um, when I came back, I just found out a word, sustainability. You know, it was the meaning, you know, I don't know why, probably, you know, I had time to think about it. So I found out, okay, I know, because I traveled around the world, I know how f serious the situation is and how fast damage is happening in the world. So this is a service I can give, you know, to, to, to help sustainability. So it was my motivation. I came back to my company and told Paul, my business partner, hey, sustainability. And he said, hey, money. <laughs> and I said, okay, I love you, but it's not my, my, my direction anymore. And we had a quite heated discussion, and after that we agreed that we will sustainably make money. He probably understands this for for a long time, you know, and I understand it like uh, in a sustainable way. So we, st we simply started to change the companies and change the environment around and change the way how how we lead people to sustainability. So Adler has changed totally. It's a faceless company today. So everything is just a material and resource, and we are nearly running on sun. So it's 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 already very in very good shape. And I started to do another business. I'm very excited of uh, autonomous vehicles. Maybe you you heard about that technology, which is quite coming in in five six years. We will see first such a cars in 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 the cities. So it's a car you don't own. So you just order it. It will pick you up. You will take a nap for a while and it will move you whenever you want to and then you will just pay wirelessly and, and it will disappear and you will never see it again and next time you take another car and it will move you an, an somewhere else and the, the great thing is that uh, we will need only one eighth of cars we have today because 90% of cars are just uselessly waiting for people outside and this idea was just amazing for me. So um, I started to work on, on Liftago project. Uh, maybe you heard about it. It's, it's a technology like, like Uberwise technology, which is optimizing taxi world. Um, we are creating a network of taxi drivers and, and creating a safe service for people because especially in Prague, it's, a, it's like a Sherwood. So for foreigners, it's quite dangerous to take a taxi, you will probably pay 10 times more than you should pay. So we have made an, uh, an, a mobile phone app which, which helps people in with that. And it was quite successful. Uh, so we won uh, a startup of the year, 2014, and now we're exploding. It's, it's a great technology. So if you type in uh, Gay Pride 2015, you get your ride for free. So I, I just arranged up today. <laughs> so I think it's for one month, so enjoy it. And <laughs> it was another, another part, and then I looked back into my city, and I was seeing unsustainable things, especially bankruptcy, and a lot of mafians, you know, just, just ruining the city. And um, I said it's impossible, so I have to do something with that. And um, so I, I, I came with vision, um, 
Ustina Labem, the place where you can live with a high quality of life sustainably. So it was the mission. So uh, we went to elections and, and we, uh, we won elections in Ustina Labem. And suddenly I was vice mayor. And I said, oh my God, I have responsibility now. And so it was quite serious situation. I have to put all my businesses just on here. And I said, oh my God, I can change whole whole city. And I was in, uh, acting from a position of public interest only because I didn't have to have more money or more weather, whatever. So if you act from that point, you see what's right and what's wrong for the city and you just can't accept things which happens easily. And it was probably the reason why I could do that job for only eight, eight months. And two months ago, uh, there was a uh, uh, t I don't know how to say that um, change in, in government. Everybody in Ustin Labem has joined, you know, communists with ODS, with uh, socialists. Everybody, you know, just to take us from from uh, the, the town hill. And the reason why, because um, they couldn't steal anymore, and it was serious. Some people just don't know how to create added value. They just have to. Uh, get sucked, you know, and and and, and suck public money. So it was very very s serious for me because those eight months, maybe maybe you have that feeling, you know, you never could do more for people than in that period of your life. And if you are in this serving part of life, this is the the best appreciation you can you can get, you know. So so you s you work like crazy. I never worked so hard before. You work like crazy for people, and the only benefit is the feeling of a great job. So this happened, and uh, I hope it's not the end of the story. So now I have a couple of months left, so I go to reunion to, spe to learn French. I don't know why, but maybe you know that feeling in, in, a, in a stomach, you know? I don't, uh, I don't listen to my mind anymore actually in my life I do my decisions on my stomach I don't I don't ask myself what I f think about that I always ask what I feel so now I feel I have to go to the reunion I don't know what will happen but it will be crazy as I know so um, I have four months in, in uh, f French now in, in front of me and then I will I will go for and our elections in 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 uh, in, uh, in a Ustin Laban district, and hopefully we will take get out uh, all those communists there because we still have communist party in in rain in Ustin Laban. So this is this is what's coming, and hopefully yeah, it will happen. So um, the one thing uh, when we started in Ustin Laban. People were like a, like a small balls, you know. They didn't touch anybody, you know. Cl very close, watching TV Nova, closed doors, you know. Don't care about anything. Today we have community, and today we have interconnected people on many levels, and and we have built trust. So it's in the progress, and I I th I really believe in community, and I really believe in in public service. So. This is about me. I don't know how uh, time's up. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much. And hopefully I will see you again somewhere. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>